what it is. Today we're going to be replacing the front and rear brake pads and rotors on this 2006 Ford 500 SE front wheel drive with the 3.0 DoorTech engine. Alrighty, so this is my wife's car. She's been complaining for a while about the stopping power and the brake noise that's going on with this car. So I figured we'd go ahead and give it a full brake job, brakes and rotors and hardware. So I ordered this Detroit axle front and rear brake and rotor kit. In the box came with two front rotors, two rear rotors, a set of front brakes, a set of rear brakes, a can of brake and part cleaner, and some DOT3 brake fluid. I ordered this off eBay and it was $205. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and jack this sucker up and get some jack stands under there so we can get these wheels off. So we got the car jacked up with some jack stands. So I'm just gonna go over the safety issue quickly um, with jacks. So particularly this jack, last time I used it, this jack was working just fine. I was a few months back and then today when I'm using it, um, or actually yesterday when I started using it, the piston is leaking. So this is why we use jack stands because if you ever jack a car up with the jack and you get under it, you start working on something, if that piston is slowly releasing and you're not realizing it, or if it blows out all at once and just drops, you know, the last thing you want is to be crushed by a car out in your driveway. So yeah, always use jack stands. We're gonna start with the front brakes and rotors and we're gonna get this wheel off. So I got a couple things I can use to get the wheel off. I got my socket for the bolts and I can use this breaker bar or the, the X bar here, but I'm gonna use my, my old trusted Harbor Freight impact gun. 50 bucks over at Harbor Freight. Let me tell you, it saves your shoulders, your arms from yanking on those wrenches. Now that I got the wheel off, first thing I'm gonna do is figure out what size wrenches I need to get the caliber bolts off and the caliber bracket bolts out. So I already did that. So that one's a 13 and that's for the caliber and then the caliber bracket is a 15 over here. And then I can just put these aside. For now, I always follow the lefty loosey righty tidy method. So I got my wrench on here since the bolts are facing the opposite direction, not towards me. So we have to go righty tidy or lefty tidy righty loosey. <laughs> so usually I'll put my wrench on there and then we'll just give it a tap to crack it loose. Put the hammer. And I'll usually do that to all the bolts, the caliber bolts and then the caliber bracket bolts. And the same ordeal with the bracket bolts. And then once you get them all cracked loose, you can use a socket wrench to get them the rest of the way out because they're usually kind of tight when you're taking them out. You can't hand thread them. But I got my handy dandy ratchet wrench here instead of the socket wrench. We're gonna get them all out with this. Oh yeah. So once I get them all cracked free, now typically the caliber bolts themselves are loose enough to just hand thread out. But the uh, caliber bracket bolts are usually in there pretty tight. So you're gonna have to use a socket wrench or a ratchet wrench to extract them to make it easier. If you just have a wrench, well, it's gonna be time consuming. A regular wrench anyway. All right, so now once I got those uh, bolts out for the caliber usually it's kind of hard to get out because um on the opposite side if you see this little tab here on the brake pad that's usually in the piston sitting inside the piston so when you try to pull it it's hooking it and you can't get out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my c-clamp and i'm going to compress this in a little bit this way i can get it past it and have no trouble um getting it out of there so i got my c-clamp set up on there but before i compress the caliber piston in we're gonna go ahead and remove the lid on the brake fluid reservoir here. This way, um, when you're pushing in the pistons, when the fluid's filling back up, it doesn't cause any kind of pressure in here. I don't think this is a vented cap, so. And what I'm also gonna do is take the cap and put it here on the dashboard. And uh, reason for that is because in the past, I have took off the reservoir lid and just left it on here loose or 
I put it on the battery somewhere and then totally forgot to put it back on. And yeah, wasn't a good day that day. And then when I finally got back onto here, you know, I had me a nice mess to clean up and no cap. So yeah, that's why I put it on the dashboard now. This way I always remember to put it back on here and I don't have it missing or having a mess. So another thing with this also, when you're compressing the pistons in, it's gonna refill up the reservoir here. So if you had just topped your fluids off or you had uh, at a service shop and they topped them off, when you compress the piston in, this is actually gonna overflow because there's probably gonna be too much fluid in there. So um, you can either use to get out the extra before you compress them in a uh, turkey baster, which the ball to my turkey baster I'm using for to plug up my floor drain right now. And um, I also have this here, this uh, big old syringe with a little rubber tube. And this is what I'm gonna use to extract uh, some of that brake fluid so it doesn't overflow when I compress the piston in. Oh, look at that. Dang thing broke. I gotta get my turkey based ball. Pretty fluid anyway. And that's probably enough. <laughs> All right, so we just turned this in a little bit to compress the piston in. I'm gonna do that on this bottom part and we're gonna remove this seat clamp and do it on the top portion too. And all right, and then the caliber should come right off. Bam. So once you get the caliber off, you wanna get yourself something to prop the caliber up on so it's not just dangling from the hose here. Or you can use your, like a, a bungee to bungee it up to the spring or something like that. But I just use something like this and I just pretty much just put it right just like that. This way there ain't no tension on it holding it. Let's check out these brake pads. I already did the other side. They're getting there. Yep, see, practically done. So we got them just in time. Now when I compress in the pistons, when I'm putting the new brakes on, I always do it this way because this claw piece has to go in here when you have a double piston. If you try doing it the other way, the center piece is gonna be blocking you. So yeah, you have to align it this way. Um, this way it pushes them both in evenly. If you try to do it the other way, you'll have to push this one in and then when you push this one in, that one will push out and it's just uh, a hassle. So yeah, you just hook it up that way where um, the threaded part here is on the back of it and then you slide the claw piece in on that side. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get this uh, compressed in. So we're all ready to put the brake pads and the caliber back on once we get everything else situated. Now, if you're just doing brakes, um, this is pretty much it. You push that in, put your new brakes um, on with your hardware pieces and, and you keep on going. All right. Oh, and when you're compressing in the caliber, I always use the old brake pad with the pad part facing the pistons. All right, back to getting these caliber bracket bolts out. So once you get the bolts on threaded, you're gonna have this piece, which is like a bump for when you're steering, and then the bracket. So sandwiches, I usually take it apart together and then I'll place it off to the side. And now we're gonna get this rotor off. We gotta take this uh, screw out right here. Now to remove the rotor bolt, you're either gonna wanna use your impact gun, which I got here, or an impact driver that looks like this. So we're gonna try the gun first and see how that works. And it broke off my tip. All right, so another thing what I should have did before I did that, we should spray it down with some WD-40 on the front. And you can actually see where the back is over here too. And I got this WD-40 can with this nozzle, which we can get down in here and spray the threads on the back end. All right, I got me another one. And this time I'm gonna use the impact driver. You gotta make sure you have this thing set right to go left or right with it this piece turns when you smack you're supposed to hold this stiff when you smack the back it'll turn so yeah we had to turn it that way so when we smack it it goes left instead of right get that in there like that 
and then give her a pop. Got it loose, and we'll use the impact. Get the rest of the way out. All right, now we got to prep for reassembly. So I always like to clean all this stuff off of the hub before I reassemble. So there was a bunch of aluminum anti-seize on there, which I'm guessing preserved the hub because there's literally no rust. So usually what I'll do, depending on the state um, you're from or area, if there's a lot of salt use on the road, or whatnot so this could be all rusted up so usually when i do take these off and if they are rusted up i'll take me a wire wheel like this and i will clean all the rust out so this way when we put the new rotor on there is nothing that will hold it from seating properly and also i like to take the wire wheel and clean up the threads right here this way when you put your bolts back on um they go on nicely because sometimes it could be crud in there or again rust or something like that that could uh, bind them up possibly make them strip out or whatnot so i always clean my threads up too now when i install the new one i just put a light coat of anti-seize um on the inside part that makes contact with the hub there so now we got to reinstall the rotor bolt so before i reinstall these i usually take the wire wheel and clean it off and I do that to everyone that um, you're putting Loctite back on like the caliber bracket bolts that you see there I'm gonna clean them up too and put new Loctite on thread it the bolt in a little bit and I want to get my rotor nice and seated and flat now I don't know what any of the torque specs are because I've been doing this so long I can go off feel um, if you guys ain't confident, just look up the torque specs. That's way you know what you're doing. So before we put back on the caliber bracket, we're gonna check out the, the sliding pins here, which they're moving freely and good, but regardless, I'm gonna take them out, wipe them off. You see all that black. I'm um, probably gonna spray some brake cleaner in there to clean out the old stuff, and then I'll let it dry. And then we're gonna put some new brake lubricant in here so we know this is gonna last until the next brake job because I used to not do this in the past and these have seized up on me and screwed me and then I had to go out and get a whole new bracket um because I couldn't get these out and they were uh, so bad they were rusted inside because I never checked them when I did the brakes <laughs> Put the lube in the boot here. Squeeze some in there. You see my sock there? Yeah, I use my old socks for rags. So yeah, and I always make sure I put the top pin back in the top hole and the bottom pin back in the bottom hole. Got it nice and lubed up. And then I'll also take the pin back out, squeeze a little more in the boot, and then squeeze the boot, this way it's actually in the boot, and we'll put it back in there, bango. Now the next step is we're going to remove these old hardware pieces from the caliber bracket here and I'm gonna take my wire brush and we're gonna clean out the channels here this way when we put the new hardware in and the new brakes um, they're totally free of any crud or crap that can actually bind the brakes up um, yeah Ooh. once I get the channels cleaned out then I can put the new hardware pieces in which I just gotta figure out which way they go. I think that's it there. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't clean them 100%, but you know, you clean them good enough to where you know that you ain't gonna have no binding issues. So now we're gonna put the caliber bracket back on and this little bump stop thing for the wheel. 
but this actually sandwiches together on the tabs on the other side of the caliber here also wouldn't be a bad idea to take your wire wheel if it's really rusted or whatnot and on these uh mating surfaces here as well but they all look good to me um so i'm just gonna roll with it i usually get this put together just with one of them thread it and then i'll go ahead and put the loctite on the one and then get this one started in there and then the loctite on the other one and then we'll get these tightened back up the ratchet wrench slightly tightened and then we're going to use a regular 15 millimeter wrench with a hammer to get them snugged up where they're supposed to be again there could be torque specs for this but i've been doing this so long i kind of know the feel of where things need to be so if i were you and you're not sure just look up the torque specs depending on the make and model of the car that you're working on um brake pads could be uh inner outer specific um sometimes one pad will be a little bit smaller than the other it could be on the inside or the outside these pads are actually exactly the same at least by this manufacturer anyway so it doesn't matter which one goes inside outside they don't have any uh squeak bar on it to let you know when your pads are wearing down and these also came with a pack of copper anti-seize so i'm um, putting them on all the contact points uh, where they slide into the guides here and then that's it get these slid into place and then we put the caliber back on gonna push your little pins in something's not right, 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 right. Bango. Couple little hard pounds with the old fist and we got her where she needs to be. And then we're gonna go ahead and get these caliber bolts back in, hand tight, and take a wrench, give her a snug. This is what I do. I pop it a couple times with my hand and I take the hammer, give it a little extra, and then that should be good. Um, yeah, I don't think Typically, you don't put uh, Loctite on those ones. Could be wrong, though. This is just how I do things. Again, I'm not no professional mechanic. I just uh, been doing stuff like this since I was a kid. My dad and uncles and stuff. All right, well, we got the driver's side all finished up. We just got to throw the wheel back on, but I always go over two or three times just to make sure I tightened everything. So... So I'm going to do, um, tighten my the upper and lower bolt for the caliber bracket and tighten the upper and lower bolt for the caliber itself to the bracket. And yeah, we got the rotor bolt in there nice and tight. So I think we're good to go to put the wheel on. Oh yeah, we got that front wheel done and we got to move this crap over to the back wheel. So we can get that one started. We got the back wheel off, we got my seat set up. So get at this one so just like the other one we're gonna take our wrenches which just happens to be the same size 15 and 13 and we're gonna crack free the caliber bolts and the caliber bracket bolts with the hammer now this caliber is a little bit different from the front one for one it's a single piston and yeah see i can wiggle this one out sometimes if they're seized in here though you can take your wrench here jam it in here and pull it out like that um yeah this is a twist in one so we can't compress this in by just pushing it in we actually have to push it in and turn this there's actually arrows right here on the side which are pointing in that direction so i'm almost positive yeah we're gonna have to turn this counterclockwise to get it to seat back in and i think the one on the driver side that I did was actually clockwise to push back in. 
take off these pads real quick, check them out. And then before we take the caliber bracket off, I'm gonna check the sliding pins. This one's good, it's moving. This one's seized. So this was actually the same thing happened on the driver's side when I took that side apart. Uh, the bottom one seized, and I'm gonna show you why it seized up uh, once we get this off. And yeah, you can tell that this one is the inside pad because that's where the piston set against it. You can see the round, and this is the outside one, as you can tell from uh, the bars here that go across. Anywho, um, yeah, as you can see here, you can see the inside pad is wore out unevenly. It kind of thins out over here and it's thicker there. That's because of that pin down there. When it seized up, it was stuck into position and it was only putting pressure on the top part of the pad and which made it wear out unevenly. And this is why it's always important to pull out those sliding pins, clean them off and put new grease in them and inspect them. Got the caliber bracket off. So this is the top pin. Take that one out, and then this bottom pin. Oh, it's actually coming out. It wasn't as seized as the driver's side. Cool. So yesterday, when I took um, this bottom pin out, I couldn't get it out by hand. I could twist it, but I couldn't pull it out. What I had to do was take a torch and heat up this bottom area until it kind of softened up, and then I was able to pull it out uh, with a pair of pliers as I was heating it up. And the whole reason is because there's a rubber grommet on this pin, which if anybody knows why they did this, please drop a comment and let me know. Um, but yeah, yesterday I had such trouble putting this back together. I had to make a special trip all the way out to Charlotte just to get a hardware kit to replace the, this piece. This is the, I guess, rebuild rubber kit or whatever. I got this from O'Reilly's. That's your part number right there. And it just comes with four of these boots, four of the pins, and then two of these, I'm calling them grommets or whatever, but two of these sleeves that go over the pin, which again, doesn't make any sense because yeah, this pin doesn't come with it and neither did the front one. So I, I really not sure what, what this was actually for or why they're using this. So yeah, if somebody knows, let me know. Gonna wipe off these pins real good. I'm gonna slide this new piece on. So we got that new sleeve on there. All right, we're gonna do the same thing to this rear one as we did to the front ones. The lube in there. And we're gonna put some in that boot and then install that on there. Uh, remember. Pretty sure this is always the bottom pin it was the bottom pin on the driver side and it's the bottom pin on the passenger side so this goes on the bottom so we got the rear caliber bracket back together with the uh new sleeve freshly lubed and the new pin covers and the new guide pieces these are actually if you can tell they're left to right one so you just got to make sure you're putting them in correctly so this bigger part here doesn't hang into the middle all right now we got to recompress this piston in here so like I was saying, you actually got to twist it and push it in at the same time. So on the driver's side, I had success with my impact and um, this key here that you can get at Harbor Freight, I think it's only like five, five bucks or the local auto parts store, whichever you prefer to get it at. Or you can actually compress this in with a pair of pliers and uh, like a breaker bar that you can push something in the side here and then put leverage pressure down on there and then turn this with a pair of channel locks as you're doing it and that, that should do it too but yeah this is super easy you just do uh, hard pressure into it and then just give it slight turns as you're doing it so like i was saying this says counter i oh, know yeah counterclockwise so get that into position there and
So what I'm doing is I'm pushing in hard and pulling the trigger. And I keep doing that, pushing hard, pull the trigger, let off, pushing hard, pull the trigger, let off until it seats it. Because you need pressure behind it while you're pushing it in. side just kept spinning I don't know if they're supposed to stop or, or what the deal is feel like I got it in enough and just like the other ones I'm gonna wipe this old anti-seize out of here and then I'm gonna take my wire wheel and clean up the hub as best I can get in between uh, the bolts lugs or whatever and then i'm gonna clean all the lugs off or the bolts i don't know studs maybe the studs yeah studs all right great about sock rags you can turn them inside out and clean again well kind of Alrighty, we got that brand new, nice and shiny rotor on there. A little thin coat of anti-seize on the inside. Cleaned off our bolt here, put some new Loctite on it. Same thing with our caliber bracket. Um, yeah, tighten my caliber bracket bolts. I got my caliber bolts tightened and that one. So yeah, we're good to go, let's get this wheel on. We gotta add a little more brake fluid, possibly. Now that we got all the brakes done and the wheels put back on, we're gonna go ahead and pump the brake pedal. Get all the fluid back into the calibers. Alrighty. And, oh yeah, we gotta put this back on. And we're gonna check our brake fluid, make sure I didn't take too much out earlier. Might be perfect, and it looks like it is. The minimum maximum look at that we're right in the middle so with the amount i took out and recompressing the uh pistons and the calibers got me right back to where i needed to be all right that's it for this one um something i did here helped you today please drop me a like uh if it's something that you feel i could have did different or better let me know in the comments peace and love keep it real and i'll see y'all on the next one